What is up, everyone? Welcome to Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins, and this is the show where we break down the latest Tesla news. And we do it live because, as you know, things change rapidly in the world of Tesla and Elon Musk and everything else kind of orbiting him. Um, and so we've got some really crazy stuff to go through today, some good stuff, some not so good stuff. And I just hope you're ready for the ride that we're about to go on here. I pulled together a lot of data because I want to make sense of some of the later, uh, the recent changes um, to things like the tax program and all that. Um, but first, we need to break down what happened recently in the very first ever rollover accident in a Tesla Model 3. Uh, this, th there's, there's definitely a silver lining here, but I want to go through this and just kind of talk through these details. So uh, let's jump right into that right now. Okay, so on Reddit uh, this past week, we got a post here um, from Staple Gun uh, that said, my wife rolled our Model 3 at highway speeds. She only sustained minor injuries and the car performed exceptionally well. And there's some photos here. Now I'll read this to you um, while we look at the photos here. So uh, he said, I figured I would share this since it may be the first rollover accident in a Model 3. Um, you can see some of the images here. And what he's talking about, I mean, God, these, these is just so difficult to even look at. Um, you can see that, that what happened was uh, the car had flipped and it rolled several times according to um, some of the people that, uh, th that were watching it. Um, and just to recap his point, she was traveling on the freeway at approximately 70 miles per hour in the left lane. The car collided with a second vehicle in the middle lane. The front driver's side of the Model 3 then hit the cement median with enough force to shear the front wheel off, then, then uh, the slide sideways and started rolling. A witness said the car rolled several times before finally settling upside down. The other car also hit the median, though much, with, uh, much less violently, and we believe the driver was uninjured. Let me just zoom in so I can read this for you guys. I thought the car performed spectacularly uh, from a safety standpoint. The driver's seat airbags protected her during the roll, including one underneath the steering wheel for her legs, which I didn't even know was there. As you can see from the photos, the cabin was completely intact. The windshield and glass roof obviously shattered, but they did not intrude into the cabin at all. So I was blown away. I mean, I was really uh, taken aback by by this stuff here. You can see uh, kind of what's going on. The charge port got ripped off. The glass is just completely destroyed. Um, the amazing thing about this, and the reason I wanted to cover this is because it just really highlights how safe this vehicle is and how really, you know, like when I went to buy my first Tesla, one of the key reasons why I did it was because of the safety of these vehicles. I mean, they're just made uh, exceptionally well. And even with an all glass roof, and this has been a, a kind of a myth or a misnomer that maybe some of the, the media has portrayed uh, falsely out there, that these would be more dangerous. But you can see this car rolled several times. The glass is completely shattered, but none of it even entered the cabin, meaning uh, she was completely fine from that. So she she d definitely went to the hospital, um, but but is doing okay, according to the reports online. I mean, this is just, these are just spectacular photos. Uh, you can see there's the, the the front wheel that was just completely ripped right off from hitting the median. You can see some of the paint of it on there as well. Uh, I mean, this is just this is just wild stuff. Um, and there's the, uh, the the airbag underneath the steering wheel. I mean, th thank God that that uh, that you know these guys care so much about this. And there have been other accidents like this in Model S and Model X where the cars were. Should the people should have been severely injured if not killed, uh, but because of of how how seriously Tesla takes safety in their vehicles, uh, this is something that that you know they survived with. So, uh, you know, thank you to I'm sure that you know they're counting their their blessings here because this is just an amazing story and one that I really felt was important to share with you guys. I mean, this is this is like one of the big things why. Uh, folks like myself, we don't just love electric cars, but we love Tesla specifically because of how much they care. I mean, if you look at this photo, this is unreal. Like you should not have survived 
uh, or the car should have been like just you know much worse off um, than this. So so I, I think you know this should give you some reassurance uh, about your purchase, whether or not it's a Model Three, a Model S, Model X, uh, Roadster, whatever whatever you go for. Um, these cars are built with safety uh, at their core, and Elon has talked about that in the past. So I just wanted to, to show you this, tell you this story. Um, you can go find it on Reddit. I'll put a link to the uh, to this post in the description. It's on the Tesla Motors forum. It's probably one of the top ones there. Um, it's pretty crazy. So, uh, in you know, he followed up by saying, "We'll be placing an order for a new Model Three as soon as the insurance is sorted out." Uh, the car was three months old with sixty five hundred miles. Uh, We've never had a car totaled before, so I'm not sure what to expect with respect to the car's value. Uh, the few used Model 3 listings I've seen with some miles on them are still near MSRP. Um, is the insurance company is starts to get into some questions about it. So, uh, and, and if you are curious, there's a thing called gap insurance, which you may want to get um, if if you you know want to cover the gap that depreciation value. Essentially, that's an idea there. So. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, oh, and, and just to recap, you know, uh, the IIHS, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, uh, did recently um, rate the front crash prevention as superior uh, and the, the uh, headlights as average, I believe is what the A is. Um, and there's no recalls or anything on it uh, as of yet. So we're going to get more information and, and, and data out of this, out of the testing as things go on. But so far, uh, the Model 3 seems to line up with uh, the Model S and Model X. And, and if you recall, there was also a, uh, a post uh, I'm sorry, a video that Elon shared back uh, at the Model 3 handover event in Fremont um, that I was fortunate enough to be at um, showing the side pole uh, collision. Um, so I'll show you that here now. This is what the uh, versus a Volvo. I think it's a SC60 or C60. Let me pull it up maybe one more time. I think I can just click over here. Click. There you go. Volvo S60. So you can see kind of... Um, the difference between the Model 3 and then the S60. And I don't think that this was meant to uh, to diss on them at all. It was just meant to kind of show uh, how much how, how much goes into this. And this has been criticized a little bit, but I mean, uh, the proof is right there. It's, it's hard, hard to deny um, these tests and any of these things. So uh, there you have it. Uh, the Model 3 appears to be one of, if not the safest vehicle you can actually purchase today. Uh, so, you know, congratulations to everyone that's getting there soon. Uh, by the way, if, if you don't have one on order yet, you can go order one today. If you've never waited, you never put a reservation, you can go do it right now on Tesla's website. Um, when I looked at it for the performance model, it was one to three months of a wait period. That's that's not too long to wait. Um, so you guys can go do that. You can continue to order them. I think there's a huge backlog, but it sounds like they're getting through it with production ramping up. Um, and so there, there's going to be um, a, a lot a lot of Model Threes on the road, which is really great because they're they're safe. They're good. All right. So the next story I want to talk about is. Um, is, is an interesting one. Uh, this one is going to help you with your tax credit. So let me jump over to that now. The, uh, the way it works is that um, Tesla, when it makes electric vehicles, and in the U.S., we have a uh, federal tax credit of $7,500 for Tesla. It varies based on the size of the battery, but because Tesla's have you know, these big batteries, they qualify for the full amount. Now, um, once uh, a, a manufacturer hits their 200,000th car delivered in the U.S., that starts to phase out. Tesla has confirmed that they've done that. That's the news. Now, what does that mean for you? Um, that means that if you have a tax liability of $7,500 or more, the next year you'll be able to get that money. You'll be able to, to write off $7,500 of your purchase um, and then potentially uh, increase your return if you were getting a return or just reduce your tax liability. So uh, I just wanted to break this down a little bit as, as to you know what that means because I don't think people fully understand this. Um, I went to the taxfoundation.org and kind of looked up uh, the average tax rates and the different tax brackets and those kind of things. Um, and you can see this is this is the one I looked up here. So 
uh, this chart explaining how the percentage of taxes that people pay uh, by income bracket. And the way it works is that basically if you make around $50,000 a year, between 50 and $75,000 a year, and you're paying 15% in taxes overall, then you, you will accrue uh, about a $7,500 tax liability or more. That means that for all the income that you earned uh, as a wage earner, a W-2 employee of a company, you uh, you will owe uh, about $7,500 or more. Now, you already likely, you, in fact, you you definitely do. If you're a regular, you have a regular job at a company, you pay those taxes in employment taxes and Social Security taxes and all these things. You can see them on your check, right? This is a difference between gross and net. So that's kind of where this comes from. So you're already paying these taxes. And then what happens at the end of the year is you file and you have deductions, you know, maybe you bought a house, uh, maybe you put solar panels up, maybe you had a kid, uh, things like that are big deductions. And then, so what happens is, is oh, you know, the, the government says you paid X amount of dollars as you were supposed to as a wage earner, but then you had all these deductions that we didn't know about. So we're going to give you a refund. Now these $7,500, that's how it works. It's like an additional deduction on your taxes next year. So um, I bring that up because not everyone understands that if you don't make enough money, you're not going to accrue enough of a tax liability and therefore you won't be able to actually take full advantage of it, even though you maybe earned it and, and it's it's uh, available to you uh, because you didn't make enough money, you won't be able to take full advantage. Um, so that's, that's point one is that you need to make and using these kind of uh, these averages here, you need to make uh, between 50 and $75,000 at least um, in order to take full advantage of it. So that, that's point one. Um, the next point is that uh, you still have to pay for the car in full. Uh, so when you look at calculators like mine and some of these other ones, and even Tesla's, I, I'm, a, I'm a little short on how they do it because they kind of make it sound like this will be a, a cheaper car as a result, but that's not true. Uh, when you buy the car today, let's say you buy a performance model and it's upwards of $75,000, you're gonna to need to, you know, write a check if you can, or or finance that 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 loan for the full price of the vehicle. You, this $7,500 doesn't appear anywhere. You don't get any of that money off that price, meaning that the loan that you get is gonna be for the full amount. Even if you're in California and you get the $2,500 state rebate, which is a check, you're still going to have to finance that full amount. So you won't be getting any discounts on the price of the car. That's point two. Right, so that when you when when I have calculators and things out there, and I'm saying, look, you're gonna have to pay, you know, 800 bucks a month for your car payment. That's legit. That's real, right? Now your net cost, you could potentially refinance it next year after you get that money back or something like that. But then interest rates may have may have risen as well. They're likely to to keep going up depending on what the Fed does. So it's one of those things where um, there's a big mis misunderstanding about how that works. It's a tax credit. It doesn't reduce the price of the car, and you may not be eligible for the full thing. However, now that Tesla has actually hit their 200,000th car delivered in the US, this tax credit is going to begin to its phase out period. And that's what this looks like here. Now I created this chart a few weeks ago. This is what we were all expecting. Um, in July, they've hit their 200,000th car delivered, meaning that any car delivered, any, any Tesla delivered in Q3 or Q4, the remainder of 2018, you will be eligible. And I say eligible because remember there's some, some caveats here to, to receive that $7,500 rebate. Now, the beginning the first half of next year, that is going to drop to 3750, 50% of the current amount. So it's going to be $3,750 that you then in 2020 will be able to get back on, on your, your, um, your tax refund. You'll be able to deduct that from your, your tax uh, liability. Then if you take delivery in the second half of 2018, or I'm sorry, 2019, it'll be 50% uh, of that. It'll be 1875. Again, all of those, all of those deductions, those credits come in 2020. So you're still pretty far out, and you don't deduct any of that. So you know that's kind of the, what's eligible and available to you. Now, beginning in 2020, uh, the tax credit will have have completely phased out. Now. 2020 is also a couple of years away. And so there are different pieces of legislation and different groups working to remove this cap. So it may come back, it may increase, it may decrease. There may be a permanent one that may be extended, who knows? But as of right now, this is the situation. And I wanted you to understand kind of um, how that all works and, and kind of what, what the, the, the conditions are. So short answer, 
make sure if you want to take full advantage of this that you make enough money and that you also uh, take delivery of your car whether it's model 3 or model s or model x this year um, in order to to take full advantage of that so i hope that helps you guys i hope that makes sense um i hope there if there was any confusion at all about uh about what how it worked and, and how you might you know take advantage of it i hope that answers it for you uh shoot me a question at teslanomics co on twitter or uh, hit me up on facebook um and, and i'll do my best to uh to help uh, clear that up for you guys um if you have more questions uh down the road because i think it's going to be one that's going to be important for uh for a lot of people okay next i want to talk about tesla going to China. Uh, now, Elon recently wa was in Shanghai for an event um, where he kind of sealed the deal on their new factory. Uh, and so uh, let me just give you the, the, the short you know, bits about this real quick. Um, and that is that uh, the, the, he was there last Tuesday for an event in Shanghai, which is kind of like, as I've been told, the, the Silicon Valley of, of China. It's like a very tech, you know, very modern place. Uh, I would love to go someday, but, but not, not yet. Um, now, he, he sealed the deal to, to make a, a factory in China, which is wholly owned. There doesn't have to be a shared ownership. There's no forced IP transfer or anything, any of that nonsense. Um, and uh, they are going to uh, aim to make 500,000 cars uh, out of that factory alone. Now, the Gigafactories here, the current setup is, you know, you make all the batteries at the Gigafactory 1, which is uh, in Sparks, Nevada, which is near Reno. And then you ship all the the, uh, the powertrains um, and the battery packs over to Fremont, where the cars are, you know, go through general assembly. Um, and so these new ones, the new design is that all the raw materials are coming in, the aluminum, uh, the, the, the lithium for the batteries and all these kind of things. They're all assembled and made there. And then out on the other end come cars. So they will make a, a complete product essentially. Um, now I'll, I'll read you the little bit here. So um, th this is from Bloomberg. They said, Elon Musk sealed a crucial agreement Tuesday to start building its second car assembly plant in the world. Construction will begin soon after approvals and permits are secured. Uh, I'm not sure how soon I, I, I believe that, but okay. Um, and the first vehicles will roll off the line within roughly two years, a Tesla spokesman said in an email. It'll take another two to three years for the factory to reach its capacity uh, and to build around 500,000 vehicles annually. Okay, so we have some data here and we have some production numbers. We have some stuff that is seriously going to impact uh, Tesla and figure out, um, or that, that, that can really kind of shape the future of the company. So uh, here's what I did. Uh, I took a look at the Tesla Model 3 production ramp, and this is using a log growth curve, which is what they've stated uh, is is how this works or how the manufacturing process works. I plugged in their numbers. Um, I, this isn't this example right here, but you can adjust this. It's on the website if you want to go check it out. Um, and then I've taken those numbers. I've added them to the actual uh, production that we know of, the actual production that they've reported. Um, I've forecasted that out, and then I've thrown in the China plant. So I have some data here. So I have these forecast details, uh, which are the three production, which is there's actuals and, the, and then projections. I've capped the S and X production at 2,000 per week because that's what they said they're at now, and I believe they've stated they really don't think they'll be able to push more out of the kind of the one line at Fremont for that. Um, and then I built the, the China forecast um, and I, I threw that all together here. So I have some data um, that, that I pulled together to see what this Chinese factory uh, will likely uh, mean for Tesla and kind of the, the impact um, that, that it could have. So starting out, we have the current Tesla production ramp. This is without, without the China plant. So you can kind of see um, how that's grown over the years. Uh, and then now 2018 with the Model 3, uh, just absolutely ballooning. Um, you can see this this kind of hockey stick curve. And then from there, you know, it, it'll it'll top out essentially. Like without a new plant, and we don't have, have any official word on another new plant other than the China one right now, uh, I'm capping them at around 104,000 uh, cars per month um, is what we're I think this actually might be quarter no this is per quarter um, so the labels wrong there but you can see so 104,000 cars per quarter that's just with Fremont this is without the China plant 
Then um, I use that same log growth curve to try to predict what the uh, China plant growth may look like, assuming that, that it goes through a, a similar ramp. Um, and, and when it does that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really difficult to predict because obviously you have different working conditions. Um, you know, there's probably, a, it's probably maybe just a perception, but maybe a fair assumption that uh, in China, they're better at manufacturing things than we are in the US. So maybe this will, it'll grow faster. So you can kind of see what I did is I used that same log growth curve that I used for the Model 3 ramp to predict uh, what would happen in China. And I'm starting in January of 2020, assuming that they would make a thousand cars by then, uh, which is, you know, roughly two years. Uh, and, and then, you know, going two years out that they would make 5,000. Maybe that's a bit aggressive, maybe it's not. And I'm putting them at a peak of, of uh, 6,000 cars uh, per week is what these are predicting. So that that's where I got the, the China ramp data from. I didn't just fabricate it and, you know, throw numbers at the wall. I used some logic and some math and some historical stuff, which is, you know, generally how we predict things. Um, then I added all that together into this chart here, um, and you can kind of see where uh, where you know the shift happens. So the Model Three ramp picks up, and then with Model Three at five thousand or six thousand a week, uh, S and X at two thousand a week, they're pretty much capped. And then you add in the China plant in two years, and you can see again it it starts to rise, um, putting them at close to uh, two hundred thousand cars a quarter. Now, this still doesn't jive with what Elon uh, said back in 2016, was October of 2016, when Elon told analysts this spring that the Palo Alto-based automaker hopes to ramp up annual production to 500,000 vehicles in 2018. Not gonna happen. And build 1 million vehicles by the end of 2020. Even with my projections here, assuming they were 100% accurate, you're still well shy of that. Um, the paper added the 2018 goal alone is nearly a tenfold increase from the 50,580 vehicles that Tesla produced last year in Fremont. That would be 2015. The automaker has forecast this year deliveries at 80 to 90,000. Quality problems and production delays plagued the plant early this year and threatened the sales plans. Again, that's kind of a, a running theme with them. But the company said last week that those problems are behind it and that expects to come close to its forecast in 2016. Okay, so so, so Elon thinks that they can get there um, to a million cars. I mean, this, you know, I'm curious what his thinking is now. Uh, I still just, I, I don't see it, it happening. Um, I, I don't see them getting to, I don't see them getting to a million cars with just the China plant, um, unless it's a much bigger plant than, uh, than, than maybe, you know, they're anticipating. Uh, but, you know, that's still several years away. They said two to three years after it begins production, which will be in roughly two years. We're talking five, six, maybe seven years from now. Um, far later than the 2020 deadline the, or uh, uh, prediction that, that Elon said uh, a couple years ago. So I'm still optimistic that they're going to open a new plant, uh, another plant in North America, um, and probably one in Europe. We've heard some some little rumblings about that as well. So so potentially something in Europe, um, and, and so more to come. Um, but right now, I think uh, they're they're doing extremely well, and things are uh, you know uh, uh, growing. And so you know all signs go, things are going well uh, for them. And this is just one a new big step. Uh, towards their goal of kind of like really becoming a, a major automaker in the world. So there you have it. Um, curious what you guys think. Let me know on Twitter, on Facebook. Hit me up. Send me your, your thoughts. Next, I want to talk about um, an interview that Elon just did with Bloomberg. And this was with Tom Randall, uh, who I think is a great journalist. And if you guys aren't familiar, go follow him on Twitter. Uh, he does a, a tremendous job. And, and this was a really good in-depth conversation um, that, that he had with him. So I'm going to read you the bits uh, that I thought were were important out of this interview, uh, and then we're going to go kind of continue on this this talk about Elon recently. So. Uh, regarding the future of Tesla, Elon said, basically, I believe the Model 3 is the last bet the company situation, he says. Uh, we will still need to work hard and be vigilant and not be complacent because it's very difficult just to survive as a car company, but it will not be the same level of strain as getting to volume production of Model 3. And when he talks about model uh, 5,000 cars per week with the Model 3 production, he said, people were pretty fired up. You can see it in the pictures that people posted. You can tell from looking at people's faces, but everybody was super gung-ho to make that number and to make sure that they could do it. We had a lot of challenges. Now, 
Tom asked him about automation and, and the over engineering. And, and that's kind of how the term I use over engineering, over automation and what Elon thought about that. So he said, um, it was like rush hour traffic at a, uh, at a bunch of stop streets and like no highways or anything. It's like you just took all the highways from LA or something. It sounded good on PowerPoint, but it was a terrible idea in reality. There are parts of it that are completely automated, no person there at all. And then there are parts which are completely manual, no machines at all. Then there are parts of it that are partly automated and partly manual. Part of the problem is that the designing heads were naive about manufacturing. Just because we have something that works great in a simulation does not mean that it works great in reality. And he went on to talk about the Model 3 quality as it relates to this. And he said, you know, what I think about is, as Tesla is kind of like a computer on wheels, it's extremely upgradable. So we're going to just keep adding more and more functionality to the Model 3. So the longer you own the Model 3, the better the car is going to get. Then Tom went um, into a, an interesting place and, and he asked him, are we out of hell yet? Uh, and, and Elon uh, responded by saying, I feel like we've got one foot in hell. Um, and, and then Elon talked to, uh, about a couple more things here and I think we're gonna get into some a dark place for a moment, so, so bear with me. Uh, people asked him, or he asked him about employee treatment. Um, and Elon said, in order for us to succeed, in order for us to live, we must work very hard. But the notion that people are not being treated well at Tesla is false. The UAW has a strong interest in promoting the idea that people aren't treated well. But you know, come in and walk around. And I don't mean like a North Korea guided tour. Go anywhere you want, anytime. Go left, go right, go anywhere you want, talk to people. See if they're unhappy. See if that they seem like they're not treated well. Bring others. We won't even escort you. Just go walk around. Go any direction you want. No escort. And then he said, of course, he's gonna he's gonna take him up on that. Now Elon talked a little bit about sleeping at the factory as well. And and this this is where things get a little interesting um, for me. Uh, so he said, you know, the reason I sleep on the floor was not because I couldn't go across the road and be at the hotel, or because I have a really sweet couch. Uh, it's because I wanted um, my circumstances to be worse than anyone else at the companies uh, on purpose. Like whatever pain they felt, I wanted mine to be worse. That's why I did it, It makes and it makes a huge difference to people. At GM, they've got a special elevator for executives, like the top floor of GM Tower is reserved for the chairperson and CEO. They've got special cutlery. They've got a wait staff for an executive restaurant. They have special elevators so they don't have to mingle with anyone else. My desk is the smallest desk in the factory. Literally, I am barely there. The reason people in the paint shop were working their ass off is because I was in the paint oven with them. I'm not in some ivory tower. I invite you to come by and ask them. Now, uh, let me just pause for a, a minute and, and talk about talk about why I, I wanted to bring that up and, and why I think that's, that's important. Um, I've worked at companies like this. Uh, where there was literally a, a separate parking uh, structure for the executives. They had their own elevator that went straight to their floor, so they never had to mingle or see anyone else at the company. They had their own gym. They had they, they definitely had their own um, uh, rest not restaurant but like a cafe with a chef that would come in every day. And they had mo they had multiples of these at different buildings and different locations. Um, and that was a very uh, a very strange place. And I don't know where. Uh, these these folks feel that they're so entitled that that, that this is like worth it to them or or, or that they feel they're better uh, th than their employees um, and I hate it I hate that rigid hierarchy that that, that that sense of like someone's better than someone else because they've done something um, I, I don't believe that um, you know uh, uh, Peter McKinnon a uh, really big youtuber just just posted a great video about this where he talked about, you know, just because he has 2.2 million followers doesn't mean that he's better than, than, than you or me or anyone else. They have a bigger reach, but that doesn't mean they're a better person. And so they don't deserve better or different things. Maybe they can afford them, but this is kind of the ridiculousness of it. Now, that is, I think, where Elon's heart is. And I think it's super valuable and it's really great um, that he has that. I also, however, disagree that he needs to be this kind of Michael Jordan character, right? If you recall, if you guys study Michael Jordan at all, he would always stay on the court longer than anyone else at practice. He wouldn't get water breaks. He wouldn't do these things. He would he would do everything more than anyone else because he wanted to be the best. Well, a company and a giant organization like Tesla don't need that. They, they, they need a leader that is going to show them the way. And I don't mean that by, by you suffering more because... 
you're going to just give people this sense of guilt, like they have to suffer just as hard as you in order to show their loyalty for the company. And I don't think that's right. I, I don't think that's the right approach as someone that's led uh, many teams and organizations in, in, in my time in corporate America. So I'm, I, I love where his heart's at. I love obviously what he's doing. It's working. Uh, but I personally disagree with that approach. Um, so there you have that. Now, l l the other parts of the interview I thought were, were far, uh, were really interesting because they talked a little bit more um, about Tesla stuff. And so one of them he said was, what is your, you know, the next big project? And he said the Model Y. The Model Y, um, if you're unfamiliar, is the SUV that they're making. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a small crossover SUV. It's going to be cheaper, similar to like what the Model 3 is for the Model S. It'll be that for the Model X. And he said, uh, the Model Y is the next big project. We've almost finished the design of in the studio of the Model Y, and we will probably debut the prototype, you know, roughly in March of next year. Maybe I shouldn't tempt fate, but I did say March 15th as kind of a joke. That was a response to a question that I asked him on Twitter, you know. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, we're a few months away from finishing the designs. You finished the broad brush strokes, but then there are still a lot of fine brush strokes. The broad brush strokes were maybe a few months away from finishing. I don't know what that means. He's talking in circles there. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, this was this was like a very interesting, very in depth, uh, good read, and I, and I'll put a link to the to it in the description. You can go check it out. I think Tom Randall does a great job, um, and, and I, I think this was a, a really insightful uh, discussion. Now, one of the things he talked about in this was his Twitter behavior. Um, and, and Elon said explicitly, he said, I have made the mistaken assumption and I will attempt to be better at this of thinking that because somebody is on Twitter and is attacking me, that is, that it is open season. Um, that's, that's, yeah, it's not good. Um, so, so he also said, uh, you know, uh, you can't, you can't be both a strong bully and about to die. Uh, we're either weak and dying or, or a strong bully. Which one are we? I would like to make a point that I never launched an attack on anyone who did not attack me first. So the question is, if somebody attacks you on Twitter, should you say nothing? Probably the answer in some cases is yes, I should say nothing. In the fact, most of the time, I do say nothing. I should probably say nothing more often. So that leads me into... Um, in, in, into my own rant uh, about this, uh, my own my own thoughts that, that that I wanted to bring to this discussion because this was prior to uh, the most recent thing that Elon said um, about one of the divers from the Thai uh, rescue that that that, that went on. Um, and, and the things he said were not nice and I'm not going to bring them up. You've probably seen him. He's deleted the tweet. So I'm not going to kind of re, uh, re resurface that stuff. It, it, it is, it is not cool. Um, I think it's lame. Um, so I wrote, uh, this the other night, maybe it was late at night. I'm going to try to read it as best I can. Uh, but it, it's something that, uh, that, uh, one of someone I admire on, on this platform does, uh, MKBHD when he has a beef or, or something to say to a company or something. Um, and so this, this uh, segment I'm going to call just dear Elon Musk. Um, you went through hell as a kid, uh, and you've accomplished like incredible things in your life. And you are the on the brink of unprecedented greatness, like Alexander the Great type stuff, who is someone I've, I've heard you admire. Uh, you've made reusable rockets a thing, rockets that land on drone ships autonomously, really like inspiring a whole new generation, my son included, um, in, in exploring space and, and looking at these things in a whole new way that, that had almost died, that, that was really on a decline. Um, in, in the world, uh, definitely uh, on the decline here in the United States. On top of that, you've made electric cars sexy. Literally, you've made them sexy. Um, and this is all in addition to your accomplishments prior to that, like making online banking a thing that actually works and, and, and that we trust. You know, millions, I mean, not even millions, tens of millions of people look to you as as one of the last hopes for humanity. Seriously, tens of millions of people, if not more, 
look to you as, as our leader to help us get to Mars, to help us switch to a sustainable form of transportation, uh, to help to, you know dispel a lot of the bad and negative stuff that's been stuck and that has led to the decline uh, of, of natural resources and, and, and different civilizations. You've given us hope. So uh, with all that in mind, I feel like I speak for uh, a, a lot of your fans when I say, please chill on Twitter. Please just take a break. Just don't post anything for three months. Just nothing, nothing at all. Uh, let, let, let you know, your Tesla PR team do it or the SpaceX team. Um, you know, stop criticizing the press. Uh, we know that they're biased and controlled by oligarchs. That's how it works. That's, that's not new. They all have their own agendas and they push their perspectives. Uh, we all get that. Right? Some people don't, but, but you know, there are a lot of people uh, calling that out. So we don't need you to do that. Right? There are other things you could be working on. Um, and stop, stop worrying about people that hate on you, uh, about little things. When someone says, that idea was ridiculous, it was just a PR stunt, when you know it wasn't, when you know that you were in direct contact with the people running the program and that they were saying, keep doing it. So uh, you know, Tesla is great. Uh, the production problems that they have are almost behind us. We are on the brink of making electric cars mainstream in the biggest car country in the world, the United States. It's incredible. Uh, we, as, as people, you know, natural born citizens of this country, are, are lucky um, to have you here with us. It, it's incredible. Um, and the thing I have to say is like the amazing people at Tesla and at SpaceX deserve to have a leader that will do better than you've done uh, recently with a lot of these Twitter rants. Now, you don't have to take my advice, obviously. You don't have to listen to this. You probably won't even see it. You don't care. I get it. But as someone that has some influence and some voice to share from a large number of people that, that follow you, uh, I, I, I encourage you to take a break. And, and, and I want you to be better because I, I know you are. Now, if you need to, to take time away from running the companies to, to, to you know, recenter, do it. You have JB, uh, who it would be an incredible CEO and is great. Uh, you have Gwen, uh, uh, Gwyneth uh, Shotwell over at SpaceX, who is also great. You have people, you have great teams and people on those teams that could step in and give you whatever you need to, to, to uh, rebalance. So, uh, my point is, is that I know from your childhood that suffering is what you knew. I knew that, that you, f I know that you feel that it's in your nature and the more suffering, the greater the thing will be. Hence sleeping at the factory on the floor when we provided you with a perfectly good couch. Um, but you do have, uh, great teams of people that can handle this stuff without you needing to suffer and bring them along with you on that journey of suffering. It's not necessary for these things to succeed. And from the tens of millions of people uh, that follow you and that look to you as this, this beacon of hope, please do us a favor and, and just, just, just try to, to tame some of, the, some of the Twitter stuff and, and, and some, of the, some of the public stuff. Do you. It, we love you and we love your, your, how you stand up for things. But this is a case, I think, where, where we all could just have, have a, a moment to, to pause and, and, and reset. So uh, don't know if you'll see this. I doubt it. But uh, please keep the missions going. Please keep progressing on that stuff. And let's let this other nonsense kind of uh, f fall, fall behind us so we can move forward with some of these, these really important missions. So there you have it. That was my 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 rant about Elon and 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 what I think he could do. So thank you guys for watching all of that. Um, now I'm going to switch over to uh, to Q and A section. Um, and first we're going to go to uh, Patreon. So uh, let me see if I can pull that up for you guys. And if you are on Crowdcast, we'll jump over to that uh, very quickly. Um, I just need to uh, make sure that everything is lined up. All right, so the first question um, from Patreon comes to us from Crafty Geek. He says, Rich Rebuilds recently made a video on the Model X's cooling airflow. Uh, the rear-facing last row seats gets dangerously hot even with the AC uh, keeping the front at 75. Could you consider gathering data on a hot day in the uh, A, the Model 3 backseat temp compared to the front when AC is running, has been running for a while, B, the rear trunk temp under similar conditions, C, both of these readings when one seat is folded down? 
thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I totally could do that. Um, that, that. That's totally an option. Um, I don't know if it'll fit into kind of the production schedule and maybe someone else will do it before then. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the idea, for sure. Um, next question comes from Larry uh, Souders. Let me see if I can pull up Patreon. I'm missing the web page. There it is. Larry asks, whoa. Aloha, Ben. Uh, I placed my order for the Model 3 Performance with all the bells and whistles except the white seats about three weeks ago. Good taste, my man. Um, they took down my payment quick, but not a word about a VIN yet. Looks like a good old hurry up and wait again. Got the 20-inch tires, but worry about eating up a very expensive rubber. I'm a laid-back driver at 73 years old. Not all Tesla drivers are young whippersnappers. Don't drag race much anymore. Go figure. By the way, like your new digs, but sort of miss the guitars and stuff at the house. Mahalo and aloha. Yeah, uh, hey, Larry, thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments. Uh, yeah, by the way, the guitars are still here. I've got this one here, um, and then I've got the other one in the case. Uh, you know, I don't want to bother my neighbors here. So uh, you probably won't get the VIN until very uh, shortly before getting the car. Now, being in Hawaii, uh, which is, I think, where you said you are, or maybe I'm just assuming that, uh, it, it may be a little a little bit longer of a wait because, you know, you have to ship the car there and, and, and those things. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you know, mahalo for watching. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm excited for you to get your car. Send me a pic uh, once you do. Israel asks, uh, understanding that this is not an investment channel, I am very curious why Wall Street does not love their Tesla beyond the bear case of their financials. Uh, they seem to move every week in the right direction, receive no love from Wall Street. Yep. To, on the contrary, every achievement is followed by a fall in their stock. My question is, how disruptive is Tesla to have so many betting against it? Uh, who owns the stock betting against it? Is it gasoline, oil, power, the other companies? I'd love to understand it better. Saludos. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Israel. Um, yeah, I, th I think you, you've you've got a lot of it right there. The oil, power, uh, power companies probably are on board. Um, gas companies, some of the other uh, car companies. Folks like Jim Chanos, uh, who are very, very famous for, you know, for betting against them. Uh, my buddy uh, uh, Galileo Russell has a channel called Hyperchange TV, which really gets into the stock and financial side of it. I would, I would highly recommend checking his channel out. It's called Hyperchange TV. Um, in terms of what's going on there, yeah, it definitely seems like there are lots of people with millions and millions of dollars at risk that they could potentially be losing by Tesla doing well. It does seem counterintuitive that they produce, you know, they have like the biggest production quarter ever, and yet very quickly after their stock drops because some analysts said, well, I don't know if that's sustainable. Yeah, well, it's one of those things, like when an analyst can just like throw something against a wall, it's completely based on opinion and nonsense. Meanwhile, the facts and the data show something else. You clearly have a corrupt system. This is why I don't invest in individual companies at all, because the market itself, I feel, is rigged. I feel like it's it's not open, it's not free, It's that's nonsense. And so, to me, the whole stock market thing is just ridiculous. I don't even, that's why I don't, I, you know, I just opt out of it in, entirely. So, there you have my thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm not a finance guy. I, I'm, I'm not a, you know, it's not my thing, um, but but it is something that, um, you know, my, my friend Gally over at Hyperchange TV does more. So, go check his channel out. All right, now let's go over to uh, to Crowdcast and see what we have. Now, if you guys are uh, new here uh, or unfamiliar at all, um, you can get on the, uh, the the invite list for uh, Crowdcast, which where you know you can actually ask these questions and people vote on them and those kind of things. Uh, by, by joining our, our community at teslanomics.co slash join. doesn't require any money or anything, but that's where I send out the invite. And I do limit it to a certain number of people because otherwise it just gets gets out of hand. And I, and I want to engage with you guys. So that's kind of the, the, the incentive there. All right, let's start with the first question here from Seth. Seth asks, hey, Ben, my question is reaching back to your five-month review of Tez. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, you and Jen talked about the app, which allows your phone to unlock the car being glitchy and flat out not working at times. Yep. Did I misunderstand this or could you possibly clarify this? Uh, no. I mean, even yesterday, I'm, I'm, I have uh, an acai bowl in one hand. I have my son in the other. I'm walking up to the car. I can't open the damn thing. It's just a nightmare. Um, it sucks. I, I really wish I had a key fob for the Model 3. Besides not having the screen, which is easily solved by a little cell phone holder, I would say this is the biggest, uh, the, the biggest thing. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I, I think that um, it, it hopefully Elon had mentioned that there would be a key fob coming out soon, and hopefully we see that because it is the biggest pain in the butt. Um, otherwise, I, I'm really trying to look and find other solutions. So, uh, so stay tuned if I if I do any. So there you go. 
Um, thanks for the question, Seth. Leo asks, hi Ben, since the Model 3 is basically a moving computer with a 75 kilowatt hour battery, uh, what's with the 12 volt battery under the hood? Why does the car need a separate battery outside of the car, the one that powers the car? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I believe uh, it has to do with maybe the voltage or some of those things uh, in, in that it's just easier, uh, probably more efficient from an engineering standpoint. And then also it doesn't drain your battery uh, when you're running the stereo and things like that, right? So so the car, so th that energy can be all dedicated to actually uh, tra transporting you. That's my understanding. Um, probably someone else has, a, has, a, has, you know, from a more engineering standpoint has really dug into it. So. Um, yeah, thanks for the question, Leo. Hopefully that helps. Phil asks, um, hello, Ben. Uh, after the recent Twitter storm over the merit of Elon's contribution to the rescue of the Thai soccer team, do you think it was a mistake for Elon to respond the way he did? In the future, should he rise above these attacks by people who constantly question his motives? Yes, I think it was lame. I think he was mistaken. He's deleted the tweets. So I think maybe he's kind of there with me on that. Um, uh, yeah, and I think he should be better. I think he has to do better. And he stated he wants to do better. I don't know why he said that in literally in an interview and then two days later or something, this happened. But no, I think it's lame. I, 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 I think he, he, was, he should apologize. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't think there's any other way to spin that, or at least that, that's my perspective. Franz asks, um, can you explain how trade-ins work? If I have a vehicle that is old and very rusty, uh, would they still take it? Perhaps as a courtesy, even if its value is small. Um, I want the plates transferred to Tesla 3 from my old car to the new without a trip to the DMV. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I, when you normally trade in a car, I don't know if, like, it, do you keep the plates? I think different states have it differently. I know in Arizona, I think the plates stay with the car. But in California, you you take your plates, or maybe it's the opposite way around. Uh, I, I would just call call your Tesla rep um, or, or call customer service and ask them. I'm not quite sure how what their process is. I've not done it. Thanks for the question, Franz, and thanks for joining me. Walt asks, hi, Ben, do you know how the rollout of the new updates work? Uh, I know some already have it, and why did they not put it out uh, to the whole fleet? I'm really interested in the Wi-Fi part of the updates, as where I live, there's little or no cell service. Uh, call your service center. Um, I actually haven't gotten an update in quite a while, called my service center, said, Hey guys, what's going on? And they said, okay, cool. We're going to send, um, we're, we're going to send you the update. So, you know, and, and I just got a notification, Hey, it's ready to be updated. So there you go. Uh, you can call them and find out that's one way to kind of force the issue. Other than that, it, it does seem odd. Like they've been really slowing it down. Uh, it may re be related to any problems or anything that the car has. And like whenever there's like a, 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 a an actual issue or something going on, it, it'll trigger, Hey, are there any updates and automatically download them? Um, and maybe as those issues are resolving, it's not doing it as much, you know, that, that's maybe a theory behind it. So, but in, in any regard, any regard, you could go to your, uh, to your service center and then just tell them exactly what you said say hey i understand that there's a new thing with wi-fi I, I have a real good use case for that can you just push me the update and and I, i've not got any pushback when i've asked them to do that so give give it a shot thanks for the question Walt. thanks for watching rick asks uh ben do you have any guidance on when dual model 3 dual motor non-performance production might begin uh i don't know i think they're already making them um but but may maybe they have to wait till they get through the performance ones first maybe a couple months maybe six thanks for the question rick peter asks uh by the Peter from Montreal, Model 3 swipe, side swiped after three days. Oh, right. Last word from Tesla uh, Cal is a part. Uh, the part is available July 26th. We'll have the car back and only two months later. Tesla's paying for rentals as insurance, rental money. They need to do better. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I think um, I think it's lame. I, I think that that's one of the challenges with Tesla is that like they're still behind so so far on on production that they don't probably have the capacity to be making these other things but um for the mainstream uh, out there i would say if not the early adopters not the enthusiasts but just the mainstream for it to be normal that would be something that would really hurt them um and they would they would get a bad rap uh and they would deserve it so hopefully hopefully they do better i agree with you thanks peter walt asks um uh, hi, Ben. I signed up for Tesla, and I am finding that it is not recording all my mileage. For instance, yesterday, the car was driven about 20 miles, and Tesla only captured 9 miles. Do you know why? This has happened numerous times. I don't. Um, make sure you're on the latest version. Um, we pushed out some updates uh, even just yesterday. I've been doing a lot of digging into the impact on Phantom Drain and just how this stuff is working, and apparently the APIs for the Model 3 are very different than the Model, uh, Model S and X, so some of the techniques and ways we were accessing data in the past, or, or 
we're querying and polling, or we're doing very differently for the Model 3, and we're continuing to refine those. So just make sure that you update the app, um, and I'll probably be posting you know any major updates we have on it on it soon. So uh, yeah, th thanks for the question, Walt. Phil asks, I know you may have addressed this issue. My phantom drain on the, on my Model 3 is about five to seven miles a day, lost depending on uh, bat battery cooling, data upload, and pinging. Would Tesla at least announce or acknowledge this as an issue? Better yet, um, a software update. Yes, they have. Uh, I've I've stated it before. Um, the video I did on Model Three Phantom Drain, uh, which used I, I think uh, seven hundred Model Threes and, and like several thousand, I think six hundred thousand overall, like what we call a charging trip, like a charging set. Or I'm sorry, a phantom trip, meaning like a, a time a time period where there was phantom drain. Um, and Tesla responded to me and said that they are aware, and this was maybe a few weeks ago, it's probably been updated or, you know, things are different now, but they were saying that, yes, uh, that they are aware that the car doesn't go to sleep often enough and that they can work on some of this um, and, and that, the, that they are that they are working on it. So, yeah, they have publicly stated that to me and I've reported it here. So, so stay tuned. Keep watching those videos. Thanks for the question, Phil. Zach asks, uh, when people talk about phantom drain, does it mean that the car charger, uh, the car, sorry, when the when people talk about phantom drain, does that mean with the charger in or just parked? Because I get drained once my car reaches full charge. I I will put my 75D on 90%, and once it hits 227, it will go down by one every few hours. Uh, okay, so what what phantom drain is? What the kind of definition is? Is that um, essentially like right now I'm here in the, in the studio, my car is parked. And it may be checking for updates. It may be doing background checks. It may be sending up data, maybe doing all these different things. Um, and that will take some energy. Uh, the Model 3, because the software is still very, very much under construction, um, it seems to show a higher percentage uh, of phantom drain than the Model S and X, which does make sense because those cars are, uh, are, are you know, more mature in kind of their operating systems. So in, in the data I showed when I posted that video, you could see that very early on, the Model 3 was ridiculously all, just all over the place with its phantom drain from the data that, that I had recorded, which wasn't for me, it was from hundreds of other Model 3 owners. And then, uh, and then you can see that there must've been some major update because it just dropped and it's been really consistent and just kind of uh, going down. So it's, it's getting, you know, much, much, better and as i mentioned tesla has stated and talked to me that that they're working on it as well as we with with our app tesla app, are are doing a lot to uh to to, to work on that as well like like really fine-tuned testing which by the way there are other um, apps out there i've seen that have that do stats on on tesla stuff and i've seen people like losing tremendous amounts of, of uh, phantom drain. And I think it's because maybe those folks uh, haven't figured out what we have about how to ping it um, and how to get that data without causing the car to wake up. Because that's what happens when the car wakes up. It shouldn't really do that much of a drain, but it appears to have um, percentage wise anyways, a fair amount. So that's what's going on there. Thanks for the question, Zach. Carlo asks, um, hi Ben, thanks for taking my question. I noticed when I get my uh, when I get in my Model 3, the LTE connection has a line through it, meaning it's unconnected. However, when I get in the car and sit in it for a minute or two or drive it, the LTE connection is restored. I've also noticed that sometimes the Tesla app has trouble connecting to the vehicle. Yep. Have you noticed this car cutting the LTE connection on your car? I'm just worried about problems receiving over the air updates from Tesla. So regarding the updates, I think they've changed their policy on how they do that. I know a lot of people are reporting they're not getting updates and we all feel worried. Um, you can contact your service center, ask them about it. Maybe maybe they'll they'll, they'll do it for you. Uh, I have the exact same thing um, where when I get in, essentially the car is completely off. The camera doesn't work. The screen doesn't come on. Like it's very slow to warm up compared to my Model S. So um, yeah, I think that's what's happening is they're trying to preserve as much battery and maybe that's one of the ways is to to turn off that that uh, th that modem that that cell signal and so it takes a second to warm up so i think it's all it is i think it'll it'll, it'll change over time but i wouldn't worry about any problems per se thanks carlo uh technocado uh asked understanding that this isn't an investment channel i'm curious why wall street doesn't uh i feel like we just answered this question um okay oh that that was uh, yeah so that was on patreon okay biotech um help me understand oh Biotech asks, help me understand, just received our Model 3 and noticed it charges a bit different than our Model S. Our Model S will charge to 90%, then will drain down to 87% and then charge again. The Model 3 stays at 90 and will recharge before it gets to 89. Um, is there some setting uh, on the S I need to change? Would love that feature on the S. No, I just think it's different in how these things charge. Um, and, 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 and the technology is just, you know, it, it's, it's vastly different, even though it may seem that they're very similar. So... 
Yeah, I don't think there's any setting or anything. Um, you can, I think, adjust. There's an always connected mode on the Model S, which I don't think exists on the Model 3, or I haven't found it yet. Um, so that you could adjust that, and, and that may may change some of that. But um, but I think it's fine. I don't. I wouldn't worry about it. Ian asks, um, hey Ben, although Tesla has been successful this far in creating excitement in the electric car space, what changes do you think they need to make in order to compete with or gain a large stake in the car marketplace? Sales, communication, general leadership, technology. Ooh, this is a good one. I should do like a whole video on this. Um, let me just think. Uh, first couple things. What change do you think they need to make in order to compete with? Uh, I think they need to lower the price. Um, a little bit. And I think they need to produce a very complete system. Um, I think that right now, as, as we've seen, if you get any body damage or these things, it's like it's a pain, it's, it's difficult. So I think it just needs to be great on customer service levels all around. Like they, they've changed the, de the delivery process for the Model 3 where it's like a five to 10 minute delivery now. That drives me nuts. I really, really loved the, the first experience I had where I came in, the car had a bow and all this. I know that they have to get these things out there. So these are these are challenges, but um, yeah, I, I think they could just do like make sure that that their that their um, that the customer service could, could be just just world class because th that's kind of the thing, right? Like like people like I, I go shopping at Nordstrom's not because I want to pay more for things, but because I know if I have any problem at all with, with something I buy from Nordstrom's, they will handle it. They will take care of it. Like there's no question that, that I have like faith and I have trust in them. So I'm happy to pay for a little bit more for something or or whatever because I know that that you know the 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 relationship I have with them is going to be solid throughout. Um, I think people, the new people coming into Tesla, maybe they have one bad experience or something right here, and it could just kind of taint the whole thing. That sucks. So it's difficult. It, it's definitely difficult. But I would say that would be the number one thing is just to focus on that. Focus on that customer experience because that, that's the biggest thing, I think. Thanks for the question, Ian. Ken asks, uh, hi, Ben. Can't seem to get a handle on why Tesla seems to be floundering. I got it earlier when the short sales were trying to bend the news, but you can't find any justification now. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a weird thing. The stock, uh, I mean, maybe it's because of Elon's tweet thing recently, but it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, when the earnings call comes out, I actually anticipate um, the earnings to be pretty bad for Q2 because of the, some of the things they had to do to, to prepare for Q3. Happy to be wrong, but I think Q3 and Q4 are just going to be the most, you know, the biggest, uh, most successful quarters uh, in Tesla's history. And, and at some point, um, the short sellers are just going to lose their shirts over it. And, and, and you know, folks that are holding uh, will, will be rewarded. Uh, th that's my guess. I, I'm not really into it. I think the markets are corrupt. I just think I don't believe in in, um, in, in, in in investing in individual companies like that. Like I don't have any any investments in any companies, not Tesla, not anyone. So. Yeah, thanks for the question, Ken. And I hope it hope it turns around. All right, we can take a couple more here, running on an hour. Hey, Ben, uh, in the exploding fruit video on the three, you close the trunk with only the handles on the inside. I knew the frunk had to be closed a certain way, but the trunk, uh, it seems sturdier to me. And once the inside handle is pulled to a point, the top can be pushed down, if I understand what you mean. Uh, can you explain why you closed it in that way? Also, one is more likely to be injured with the doors of the trunks, probably because of the frequency of use. Any fruit explosions there? I didn't. I didn't test the doors. Um, that would be fun. Uh, no. So uh, okay, there are a couple things. Um, when you, if if you really want to have a car be a high quality like show car level where it's just beautiful, um, and you really care for it and take care of it, you never want to be touching the the paint at all. Uh, you want to keep it, you know, pristine and never touch it whatsoever. Um, which is why, I, like, even the frunk, I know people they're like, ah, they hate using it because they never want to put their hand on the paint or, or on the exterior of the vehicle. And I know in a practical sense that that's not there, but if you really want to maintain your car, you never want to do that because as soon as you do, you need to wipe it off and clean it and those kind of things. Now. I actually uh, w would close it with the top normally, but then people had corrected me um, uh, here and, and they were saying, what are you doing? Here are the handles. You, this is how you must close it. Um, so anyway, so that was where, and that's what I do now. Uh, it is easier because it's just a one step thing, but the result as you saw was it, it slams pretty hard. Uh, and then, you know, with regards to, to, you know, closing it on top, my wife also closed it on top 
and and you saw kind of the results there it still was pretty damaging much more so than the model s which obviously with with auto close trunk so i don't think there's any surprise there. that was just a fun dumb video that we wanted to make uh i was really kind of taken back by how, how upset people were i got emails from people telling me the precise amount a uh, uh, distance at which you should let go in, in this and that I mean, I, it, it's kind of ridiculous to me that people took that so seriously. I, I think people are overly defensive and they think that uh, Tesla and the Model 3 are, are, are perfect. And, and meanwhile, by the way, the Model S is a better car, you know, flat out. You can't really argue that. So, so there, there you have it. I mean, I think it was ridiculous that people got upset about it. I thought it was funny. I'm going to still make funny videos, even if people don't think they're, don't, don't care for them. They can unsubscribe. I really don't care. It's one of those things, right? Like where um, as a creator, you have to kind of, uh, bring your creativity and your ideas and you can't actually let things uh, like people that get upset about uh, the distance at which I, I held the trunk uh, in a video where the point of it is to crush fruit. So I think it's funny, um, it, it, you know, uh, take it in jest and, and keep moving forward. So uh, regarding that thing, yeah, that's just what, what uh, someone sent me this post about. That's how you're supposed to close it. So that's why I was doing that. Thanks for the question, Bridget. M Service asks, um, I've had my three for a month so far and love it. Um, I see you're thinking of getting the Performance 3. Uh, after looking at the price and, and uh, some of the uh, performance numbers, I don't necessarily see that big of a jump um, to really warrant dropping 75K. Looking at the price, I think I would consider a used S or if I had a few dollars, a new one. Thoughts? Yeah, so I posted this on Twitter the other day because um, there is a, uh, if you look at it now, uh, it's, if you look at the um, the the price, it's one to three months um, to deliver, and then uh, the price had dropped on the Performance Model Three. Now, the thing I would love is if it could actually beat a P100D, which I understand that they don't actually want it to do because then people would never buy the P100D, and that's kind of a big money maker for them. But I I, I am just a little bit like I think. Um, I don't know. It, it might be fun. I kind of would want to do it just for you guys. Now, I am uh, going to get a test drive this week or next week of one, so I'll let you know how that goes, and maybe that'll flip me, flip my, my, my mind on it. The, the challenge I have is that I don't see keeping the Model 3 for a long period of time. Um, I, I really don't think it fits with my family. It's not a great family car. There are so many shortcomings of it. Um, it is great for what it is, but for my family and my situation, I would far more rather have a Model X. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. So that, 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 that's kind of what I'm thinking. So th th thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, it's something to, to consider. Maybe after I go drive it, uh, I'll have a different opinion. Uh, hi, Ben. What is your opinion of electric motorcycles like Zero? I, ha I have one that I use to com uh, commute to work. 38 miles round trip works great. It is a lot cheaper than the Model 3 and charges overnight. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I think if, you, if you're comfortable riding motorcycle, if you live in a place where it's 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 doable, great. Yeah, I, I, I think all motorcycles should be electric. Um, it, 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 I, motorcycles are one of the things that annoy me more than anything because of where I live. Uh, they're just loud and they just, it's just terrible. I just, I just hate them in general. Um, uh, but those ones I think are awesome. I, I, I hate how loud and annoying motorcycles are and how seemingly people that own them, like that's a thing that they want is to annoy other people. Um, I feel like it's, it, it, it's like the, um, you know, the, the kid that, that was a bully in high school that then, you know, never amounted to anything. And so this is his way to kind of get back at people and show he's still like a, you know, macho guy. I think it's just like the most chauvinistic dumb thing ever. So so anyways, I'm a fan of the electric ones because they're, they're quiet. <laughs> and and I, I think it'd be rad if, if uh, more people wrote them. Um, yeah, so, and glad to hear you like it. Thanks for the question slash comment. Tony asks, um, can you ask Paul how many people would pay for a test drive from private citizen given the shortage of Model 3s? Go on Turo, you can rent it. Um, people do it every day, you know, 150 bucks a day just to rent it out. So there's part of an answer for you. Mel asks, I was really upset by the rudeness of the comment from the British driver at Elon. Uh, generously went above and beyond to build a mini sub. How can we show our support for Elon? I don't know if right now is, is the right time. Uh, I, I think that Elon, Elon overstepped when he responded. I think he was too aggressive. I, I think that it, it's just wrong. I, I think that he needs to do better. Um, and, and the people that, that work for him and, and, and those that follow him and support him deserve better. So I, I wouldn't really support show the support for Elon right now. I think he needs to, to show some humility and, and say he was wrong. That, that's my opinion. Thanks for the question, Mel. Okay, guys, I uh, appreciate everyone for joining me today. 
Make sure we've got everything lined up. Uh, just one last bit of um, uh, of housekeeping. The uh, the uh, referral program has been extended for two weeks, which is very different than it had been previously. So prior to uh, prior to right now, it was every quarter they would extend it, and then I got wind that it might be ending. Uh, I was pretty confident that the free supercharging was going away, and then they did extend it just yesterday, but they only did it for two weeks. So that again m makes me think that we'll definitely see a new program after the end of this month. Um, but but who knows what it's going to include? I still think supercharging is uh, free supercharging is likely going away. So if you or anyone you know is buying it, you can get my code or someone else's. I think there's a whole Reddit forum on there. Just make sure that that no one buys one without using one. Um, I've also heard of sales reps pushing their own codes, which I think is kind of lame. Um, so, uh, so, so that kind of sucks, but just, if you know somebody, um, it makes sure that, that they get a code. Okay. That, 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 that's my ma main message. I'm not really interested in, in trying to push mine anymore. I've completely maxed out everything that there is to get. So I don't get anything out of it. Other people could, uh, could benefit more from it. So, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Um, make sure to stay tuned later in the week. I've got some more fun stuff coming um, and some highlight videos if you missed any of the stories from today. Uh, and then also get on our email list at teslamics.co slash join so that you can get invited to the discussion next week. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your week and I will see you back here next time.